What's going on guys, Scar coming at you with another Magic the Gathering video. Sorry for the apologies for the inconsistency in uploads. I've been super busy uh, with my IRL stuff, so it's been a little bit hard to actually get some uploads done. And in that time, I've actually realized that there are some new things in the meta since my last recording, as I've seen just a ton of rogues uh, in a lot of the playtests and I did before starting to record these videos. So, I mean, in today's video, we're more than likely going to run into some rogue decks, but we're diving into clerics on a budget. So overall, what this deck is trying to do, we're trying to just play a cleric tribal. So essentially all the decks like the rogue deck we did in a previous video uh, are all clerics in some sort of manner. Uh, the goal here is to gain some life, take advantage of Dovin's veto in the sense that every time we gain life, we, our opponent loses that much uh, damage, uh, as well as combine it with a few other clerics as well to help us kind of gain life every time we play a cleric. So there's that as well, helping our Hallowed Priest get up bigger, um, possibly escaping some more cards from the graveyard, but overall just trying to overwhelm our opponent with the, all the life gain and do one big swing with like a veto out, giving all our creatures life link and just swinging hopefully to finish off our opponent. Uh, how we do this is pretty simple. If you haven't seen the budget deck video that I did earlier with this deck list that I have, um essentially what the goal here is like i said in this is we are trying to get the veto out on the battlefield because whenever our opponent gains uh life we uh, they whenever we gain life they lose that much life and with zendikar rising they added in the cleric of life spawned which is a cleric that whenever another cleric enters the battlefield under control we gain one life and whenever we gain life for the first time each turn we get to put a life we get to put a plus one plus one counter on cleric so in a weird way hallowed priest this is like a second hallowed priest for the deck because the whole deck is cleric so there's a good chance that we're going to gain some life from all of this uh, we have a couple other interesting cards in the deck we do have the arching vessel which is a cleric as well but we can always return this back from the graveyard uh with the ability of uh call the death dweller so we can always bring it back again in the five five as well as also getting back key cards in the deck uh we also do add demon's disciple for a little bit of uh, creature sacrifice to hopefully have our opponents sacrifice key creatures on their side of the field as well as we have a couple little things scattered in and out uh we have things that make us help produce additional lands we have the ordinator from the new starter sets uh as well as the hollow priest both these cards are very good in this as they're both clerics and they're on the relatively cheap side the deck isn't really super expensive on what it's trying to do in the sense of cost for uh cards uh we are playing i guess 22 uh lands uh eight uh planes 10 swamps four scoured barons and because we're playing four copy or three copies of the cleric the skyclave cleric uh that counts as an additional three so we're at roughly around the right number um but overall at the point here like i said is we're just trying to ramp up with the clerics on the battlefield hopefully getting a veto out and then just swing you know making our opponent uh pay for us getting just a bunch of life with either swinging in big damage or getting that one big swing with uh dobin's veto out um and just tapping it for its life gain, giving all our creatures life gain and swinging in for probably lethal at that point just in case we get some big hallowed priests and also big cleric of life spawn so let's dive into some games let's kind of see how this deck goes and uh we'll talk about it after we're done all right our opponent's on the play and our hand is not good in the sense that we have white mana no black mana so we're gonna mulligan all right this is good we can throw away uh extra planes i think which is not terrible in the sense that we still have enough and hopefully we will draw into another land interesting okay so it looks like we are playing um a deck that probably is trying to run Luris and get Luris back on the battlefield so not the biggest of deals uh no blocks if they decide to kill it it's fine um maybe we eliminate not let him get value you know run life back All right, so it looks like we're playing some sort of devotion deck. That's unfortunate for us. Uh, we did not draw a land. Play this. Uh, no attacks. Say go. Kind of things that were laying behind. I mean, I had with the, the hand we had, it was the smart decision to probably two throw away. Um, two throw away the the land because the land overall wasn't expensive. That's fine. They have removal is the question. They could have the, the call of the death wall of their own. That's what I'm kind of curious about. They may have that. Is 
The question is, do they attack? Because this actually gets bigger if they decide to attack, but they don't. We still don't have... Um, still don't have... Uh, whatchamacallit. But I think this is the play, because this will pump up this cleric, making it a little bit more difficult for them. Pumping both these up. I'll swing with this one, see what they do here. They could block, I guess, essentially. Like I, like I said, they may have something to uh, get this back. But I mean, overall, we're in a good state. If they do play some removal here, it's not the worst scenario because like we can draw a land and get a good chunk of our stuff back. I'm actually hoping to have an Archmean Vessel get blocked into something if they kill one of the clerics. That's fine. They get their uh, little 5-5 five five here. A veto would actually be really good because that pings them for two points of damage. But they're being very, um, very selective on the removal. Um... The problem is with having limited mana, it makes it very tough for us to figure out how we want to do this. I could eliminate, leave the eliminate open. I could play a vessel, gain these up one higher. I think the play here is, um, probably get rid of the five five. They can sacrifice if they want. But this forces them to sacrifice, which also then taps down their Araya. That's probably fine. That is actually a good card that we could possibly think about adding to the deck that I don't have in the original deck list. Uh, I'm not going to say do anything. I'll sit back. Still missing a land drop, which kind of stinks. We've drawn 11 cards into the deck. We've only seen two lands, minus the one we threw on the bottom. All right, so they're thinking about Okay, they're thinking about sacrificing a card, which I think is surprising. So they're probably looking for some sort of answer for our board state, maybe a spot removal. All right, so they drew another one. Are they checking? Maybe they have another call of the dweller. All right, there we go. It's a tap win. So, I mean, it's not anything great. I will play another Archmage Vessel. Gain some more life and we'll also play this because we're gonna gain life so it's like okay to get a little wide with the board state plus this also allows us to have extra blocks they do have a, a some sort of spot here but they can do some sort of spot removal and or something like that because that right now they have a priority hold um we're not gonna attack though we're gonna sit back they may also be looking to do um they may be looking to play their castle block main. Uh, that's fine. They're still digging like deep and hard to like find more answers. Cause I guess our board state's still, still a little bit bigger than they expected. All right. I mean, it's still like the game's still not out of hand, even though we've been down lands the whole time. Um, I think we swing in. We'll swing up top. Um, I could play the veto here, gaining some life, which is good, which then also makes any life game we do have better then also pings them life still get pinged for one but also force them to take a little additional life right or no maybe not but also doesn't allow them to uh gain life we can always get the veto back we can also also get the cleric back I mean, maybe they're, maybe they're waiting for whatchamacallit here. A uh, Great Merchant would be like a big card here for them. All 
All right, another land is not terrible. I could play this, kick it, which I could actually tap down two creatures. Um, which isn't a bad play, actually. Uh, forcing them to tap this automatically. Which they don't, I guess. Um, yeah, I'll swing all in. I don't really care. If they if they decide to chump block anywhere, that's fine. I'm actually very surprised they just didn't chump block, but I guess they, they're thinking the same thing. I'll take it. I will say this, I am doing okay, I think, even though we've been kind of behind in a sense. Um, just on that basis of... Um, I'm very surprised they're playing Hateful Eidolon, but I haven't seen any dead weights. It's very interesting. I am in a weird range for a Gravy Merchant, which at six. Eleven. Is that twelve? Yeah, I knew it was coming. It was a matter of time. I actually kind of like this hand because it has some sacrifice fodder and we do have a good portion of mana so i'm gonna keep uh this is actually very good with the with it being a cleric deck just because it's a 2-2 vigilance guy so we do gain a benefit of that it looks like we're playing some sort of mono green deck possibly maybe adventures i don't know it's hard to tell it's just a green mana gruel uh look, i know what we're playing we're playing uh whatchamacallit aren't we We're playing like the Omnath deck, I'm gonna assume here. I'm gonna swing in, see what they do. Um, we could get them next turn by playing the Demon's Disciple, which makes them sacrifice the Lotus Cobra. But this turn, they're gonna have a lot of land, so. Uh, it all depends. Now, if they're playing the deck I'm thinking of, which is a deck that's been rolling around here, there's like a deck that plays like Omnath and stuff like that. Oh. Okay, they're not gonna play they're gonna play tap. Great horn. That's unfortunate. Unfortunately for them. Um, unless they get something for one mana. This is actually gonna die next turn for them. That's still fine. Um I'm not too worried about that. Just on the basis of Uh, we'll sacrifice this, you sacrifice that. Still fine. Um, we'll swing in. They could block. Uh, we'll sacrifice this one. We're just slowing them down because it looks like they're playing like a Skeet Mob Lotus Cobra deck to try to get a, a whatchamacallit, that is uh, like a lot of Skeet Mob type things because our Skeet Swarm. Because essentially what the deck is trying to do is just trying to get to like six lands to make copies of Skeet and then you put like a, a mutate creature on it because it makes it bigger and um, it just gets out of hand a little bit quickly just because there's a lot of creatures. Uh, they right now do have more value just because they have more lands. They are also playing like stronger cards so overall budget wise. So I mean we are on the disadvantage budget, uh, which is not the biggest of deals at the end of the day. All right, so they're, they're ramping up for something. All right, this doesn't help when you draw 
two spells, but you know, we're getting some life. We'll end turn. Nothing, I'm not in any rush really to play out what's in my hand. See, now they're gonna get multiple things, make a copy. They're gonna get a land to get multiple copies. Now they have multiple three fours. Uh, it's gonna get out of hand real quick if they have uh, more stuff. And we're done there because there's nothing I can do at this point. Um, opponent goes first. Uh, this hand's decent because we do have this as a land. We don't. We do have a turn one play. Yeah, we'll keep. But they're playing Obosh, which is very intriguing. I, I'm gonna assume it's like a mono red deck that is playing Obosh or something, or possibly black. I don't know if there's a Rakdos deck floating around there. That's like odd, but it's the only things I can think of. So it may be beneficial that we keep like this guy up just because it's some life gain. Uh, anything with life gain is going to be good. And our opponent's thinking real hard about their hand. Just waiting for my uh, keep hand and whatever to pop up. I mean, the one downfall is that it does come into play tapped, which is a little, un which is not great, but we'll keep it open. Oh, are they playing the starter deck? Because they're playing Serterum Ser Skeleton, so I'm intrigued here. Uh, no blocks. Interesting. I mean, I'll go to combat first. I'll get my one life back. Um, I think I'm actually going to play this into play tap. I don't feel like playing the Cleric just out yet by himself. Maybe have some sort of fodder to get him bigger. I mean, I see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get like odd stuff. So right now they could have a three drop is essentially. So they didn't play turn two. So they're just carrying a card. Okay. So it looks like they're kind of playing the, the starter deck. Uh, no attacks. Now, now this deck can only attain cards with odd converted mana cost. So the only thing they could really have removal wise is either Murderous Rider or Murder, I would say. Though if they, though if I do actually chump with both these, I can get them back next turn and actually get. That's fine. They're in a weird position here. They're probably going to buy the Obosh. It almost say have a three cost card. So this is actually a very interesting deck that that's going on here. Uh, what it's trying to do. Um, I think the play here is actually to call the Death Dweller. And then we'll put both counters on this. And then we'll gain a life. We'll make this a five five. So they can play the Obosh, which is good for them, but it only just makes them do double the damage, right? So essentially these would just trade. Uh, we'll veto. And then we will play the Cleric. Uh, no attacks. I could attack in and they block with both and then I kill both, but I'd rather hold back. Because they don't really want to attack in with their Obosh, but they could have, they could have removal for it, but we can always bring it back. I mean, Vita would probably be the card you want to get rid of. 
Maybe they're thinking about if I swing back in with a life gain attack, are they going to kill me? I mean, this is only two damage. This is six. Puts me down to, you know, 17. I can swing back in with a very aggressive. It's fair. It's a loss of life. It's not going to hurt me more. It's still a loss of life. Yeah, they're more than likely. Yeah, I figured. Uh, we're actually going to keep on. I probably should have played that first. Um, that's my bad on the, the play. Uh, no attacks. Next turn's pretty much, I think, the turn of almost death. Give or take. Black Break Troll. Sure. I will take eight if you swing in. Or what is that, 16 actually? Um, what can I get back here? I mean, I could block here. No, it's fine. I'll give everything lifelink and swing in. Do I have enough? I do not have enough. Well, I'll attack. Minus these, of course. The thing is, I don't think I'm still dead, even if I gain X amount of life, just because I'll block the biggest things, tap that down. You should probably block something, though, and not take damage. You have block with two things. It has minus. You're really going, you're going really hard with all this, aren't you? Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll give everything lifelink. You take seven, you lose seven, nine. We gain a bunch of life. Um, our opponent's going first. Our hand is not good for what, our, what we're trying to do. Uh, this hand's better. Um, I guess we'll get rid of the kite sail, possibly, just because it's not great in this situation. Because we'll play the tap land into play tapped. They're playing mono white life game, possibly. Or they're playing like a rare version of our cleric deck, so it's like they're almost playing the same deck as us. Yeah, it looks like they're playing the rare version of our deck. Uh, which isn't great for what we're trying to do here. Um, I could eliminate this, which is what I may do. I think I'm just going to... No, it's it's fine. I'll hit next and turn. Um, I could have played creatures, but I feel like letting that get bigger and big and... Uh... Yeah, that's fine. I'll wait till they swing in, because they're probably gonna figure out where to put counters.
Well, we'll, we'll, we'll kill this before the counters go anywhere, so it only gets a counter, doesn't get both counters. All right, that's perfectly fine though, because now it like pretty much um, allows us to kind of get our board going. And then next turn we can play Demon's Disciple, which then makes him sacrifice something. That's fine. I mean, we're going to literally have the same turn. Uh, I will take... Uh, if we take three, either we're gonna take in six either way because of the life gain, so it kind of sucks. So we're actually just gonna take it regardless. Probably wants to play our own veto because then we'll gain ping of life. Um, I could play Demon's Disciple, which makes them sacrifice at least one of their creatures, which could be crucial here. Which I feel like they probably get rid of the aspirant. Um. And then we'll just get rid of the Archfiends, I think. And no, they have to figure out what card they want to get rid of. This could be puts them in a weird predicament just because their deck of what they're trying to do on the fields. This is, this is actually very tough for them because it's like, which one do I want to get rid of? They get rid of the veto. They must have a way to get it back, so we're not going to attack. We're going to sit back. They may have an... Yeah. Okay, so they're legit playing just like a rare version of our deck. So this is fine. Um, what does this do? Whenever or another cleric dies, return target cleric with lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to your hand. I mean, they don't really have anything. I'll take the four. I'm not worried about it. Um, we'll play our own veto. I should have played the Hollow Priest. It's fine. Uh, no attacks. We'll sit back. Next time we can swing him for a big uh, health one. Um... Take five, lose an additional five down to two. Then if they block. Well, if I also then lifelink. I got to take it regardless. I'm still. I mean, I could have blocked and took in whatever. I'm not dead, though, so that's the thing. Uh, that doesn't help me in this situation, though. So it, is, it puts me in like a weird predicament because I'm still going to die just based on life loss. I mean, I could have blocked actually thinking about it and I would have only lost the five, which would put me at seven. But then these two would be eight. Um, This only gains me two life, which makes them lose. Which actually I would gain three life, puts me at five. This only gets just that little bit bigger, doesn't get much bigger. But it sucks when you're against like the mirror matchup and they just play a slightly better version of your deck. This is not going to help me. I could swing and gain a bunch of life. They could not do anything in response, but they could swing back for big damage. Maybe we just kind of just play it out and see what happens. Why not? I lose life. It's like everything stacks back forth. Um, and then I pretty much lose because that's enough to kill me. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Um, I actually think this hand's pretty decent. Uh, tap land is okay because we have two tap lands, but we're not really playing anything. We could play vessel, but I don't think it's great. Turn one, I don't even think we're on the play. Oh, maybe we are on the play. That's good. Yes, and the mulligan, sweet. So maybe we'll play the... the maybe we play the Barons into play tapped. Let me get the Ornator going.
Though I will say this. I'm kind of happy so far I haven't seen Rogues, but now I can be jinxing myself. But it's red. Maybe it's Grixis. I don't really know. I mean, I could play Archfiend and bait out something. Because if they do kill it, then it's good for us. Let's just play the Ornado, though. It doesn't look like they have any burn spells just because they nothing targeted the Ornado, but they could now. Boros. Boros Warriors. Interesting, interesting. Mm, what is this? Tap one, make it bigger. I think I'm going to play this land and to play tap just because I didn't draw land. Are they going to block is the real question. I mean, I'll test their merit and see what they do here. All right, they take it. All right, let's actually wait and see what they do on their turn. I think this is like this is the game we got to play with this is maybe they'll play something bigger. I mean, that three mana. Uh, That's fine. We'll eliminate that. I don't really mind having. Probably should have waited, but we'll do this. We'll play another one of these. And we'll play this. Uh, we'll pass because it's a 3 3. Next turn, we can play the Demon's Disciple, which makes them sacrifice at least one of their creatures. And then we'll just sacrifice the vessel. It's fair. Do they have another one now? It has double strike, so. Keeping their board clean is going to be key here. All right, so this guard, they discarded an Ember Cleave. Wow, that's big. Sacrifice. All right, they get rid of their double strike, which is interesting. Uh, no attacks. So you go. I mean, the good thing is that this is actually blocks that, but they could always put an equipment on it. All right, so the plane. Whenever you attack with a player, okay. So equip things. Uh, this is actually become really big next turn, just because we're gonna gain two life, ping them for two. Could set up for a possible big. What's the second ability? May unattach an equipment from creature control. I mean, I don't know what they have for one, but they could have something to pump. I mean, I'd rather make them waste it. That's perfectly fine. They, I, I had to make them use it, to be quite honest, and now they're tapped out. So I think that's actually good on us. Oh, yeah, we'll veto. And then we'll play another cleric. Uh, no decks. Let's we'll see if they swing out here. I mean, what do they could possibly swing for? Uh, to to eh. It's fine. Create a one one white, and if you have an equipment, you may attach it. Looking for an ember cleave. I, I feel like either you have a couple options or you drew dead. Well, you know, you would have just thrown them on the bottom, right? You're probably like thinking of multiple. All right, got another warrior with double strike. Sweet. Interesting. I mean. Do you have another play? Because you leave Nahiri open. Go there and one to face. Damage. I don't feel like that was the play. And then we'll just get one, two. And then we'll gain two life 
It doesn't really matter because they're both gonna die. We gain some life for them all coming to battlefield. Ping them in the face for one point of damage. And then these will die. We'll get the pings. We'll get the triggers again. And then we'll ping them again for two more times. So, I mean, I, it, whatever they do here, I'm just going to take it because next time we just swing in for big damage regardless. That's fine. It honestly doesn't matter where you attach it to. I'll take six. No blocks. Yeah. They knew they were dead. All right, so in closing, I mean, overall, the deck performed fairly well. Um, when it, the deck did come together and we got the right cards out, uh, it did seem to do fairly strong, even against some of the decks that may have been a little bit on the higher end of the budget. Uh, we did have a couple rough matchups against some decks that just overall had the advantage on, on us, and we just couldn't get back into a place of either putting the board to more of a balance where each side was kind of even. Uh, but like I said, I mean, for a budget, I think this deck does perform uh, fairly good. Maybe there's a couple tweaks you can make here and there. Uh, I don't know if there's just a need for more removal. I, I mean, the Kite Sail Clerics really didn't come into play. I mean, it's only a two of anyway. Um, but I mean, with that being said, I do enjoy the Cleric build. Uh, we do have the sideboard here it, with the, some of the cards that you could always throw in. I mean, Speaker of Heavens is definitely a good replacement for the Kite Sail Cleric. If you decide to upgrade there, that'd probably be my replacement there. Uh, Luminarch Aspirant makes a lot of our clerics just that much bigger. So I don't know if that's something we get rid of, like the Skycleave player. Can we just go ahead and add just these in? Or, you know, I like the Hall of Priest personally, just because of the, all the life gain we have in the deck. So I'd like to keep the Hall of Priest. No Priest Oblivion, I'm unsure where this can kick. Uh, ki like kick something out to come in. Uh, maybe we get rid of some of our top end. Uh, but I mean, you got to kind of leave that for Orath because I think Orath is the better top end in that sense just because he does overall fit better. He our clerics back in succession, so anything dying from him down will just kind of come back into our hand. Um, or to the battlefield, I mean. Uh, Angel of Destiny is kind of that weird, interesting thing I kind of want to play around with. I haven't actually had a chance to play this in like a rare or mythic version. Uh, so that's something I would like to play around with. Castle Lock thing will definitely be a good fit in the deck just because the goal here is to kind of draw a little bit uh, deeper into our deck because as we were getting later in some of the games we were kind of our hand was getting kind of light so we were kind of like drawing for answers off the top of our deck so to have like a better clearer answer of how to get to like maybe something that we need to hit to kind of uh catch up and or just get ahead is always good and then the pathway i think is just an overall better play than playing the tap land of course so probably adding four of those is probably where you want to go with that with that being said guys let me know what you think about the deck down in the comments below if you like this deck uh what deck are you playing currently in zendikar if you are playing a particular deck uh, right now, uh, I know Rogues is the popular deck, so there is that. Uh, if you guys like the video, hit that like button. Def definitely helps out the channel out a lot. If you want to know I post more videos, hit the subscribe button, and I will catch you in the next video.